all the variables of the service. And what he's focused in on, and I think it's very good to do it, is he's, their association pretty much covers all of Kenya for, for physical disability um, devices. So he's really focused in on if all the variables like design and the, um, you know, the needs of the patients and all of those variables are um, fine-tuned, He's focusing on the on the economics, on the costs, the cost of the devices. Where can he where can he produce these items of good engineering design at the lowest cost? And so he's as an economist, he's really focused in on the cost of providing the service, and then matching that up with the ability of Kenya to afford that cost. And I think it's a great exercise that he's done for an entire country. And um, he's brought up some very, uh, he's had to deal with a lot of things. For example, he spent 20 years trying to develop um, local, local manufacturing at low cost in Kenya. And he had a, a large staff, he worked really hard at it for 20 years, he's given up. He says he cannot produce quality items that, his, that the patient base will, will use. He's gone to China and India. So it's, um, I think we can really learn from, from those folks that really focused in on like one marketplace and really um, been working in this area for like one marketplace. Yeah. No, I, I think that's, uh, I think it's great and if we could even learn from how he's doing that cost, cost benefit issue and you know trying to match the quality of the technology with uh, the ability of Kenya to produce it. And um, well, I guess in one way we were looking at what other supply chains existed. And so uh, I'm guessing part of what you're trying to say is that they are being able to get good quality, low cost things but outside the country. No, so if they go to India, China, is it good quality or is it just that it's low cost so they go there? He could not. He could not manufacture the items that the patient base are willing to pay for mm. in Kenya. Right. He had to go outside. Right. Yeah, and I, I think that is uh, you know that's the same thing that um, World Bank wheelchair is doing in Haiti, and they're trying to distribute these uh, wheelchairs for their. They're trying to set up these distribution centers inside Haiti. But their issue was the same, that we can't really produce it there. That there are all these different constraints, and the constraints might be different from the constraints in Kenya. But So people do deal with that and then try to come up with, uh, you know, what are the alternate solutions, where can we get it from? But that's a great, great example. Thank you. Sort of to follow up on, on your question, I guess, I get a little nervous when I hear reports about somebody, especially somebody from the West, who failed to get something accomplished in a developing country. Um, because that's true, it happens, it happens all the time. And I, but there are, you know, most American businesses, startup businesses fail, right? And uh, every biz, everybody who tries to create a business here, um, or everybody who gets a degree and then doesn't, find, winds up not succeeding in their field, they all have a story about why it didn't happen. It's usually not their fault. Right. So uh, sometimes when I hear stories like that, I'm not sure this is the case with your friend, I say, well, you know, there's clearly not enough people trying because only, you know, a small percentage of these enterprises are going to succeed in the first place. Hi, my name's Chris Howard. I've just recently graduated from the business school. I actually worked for Wellman for five years, and so I know you, but it's an interesting, interesting challenge. Essentially, like it, just the cost of the raw materials in these countries is essentially a barrier to entry. So we built wheelchairs in Zambia for 300 bucks, and you know you can import a wheelchair for 50 bucks. So they, they import wheelchairs. There's just an economic argument against local manufacture, which some of the organisations like well, they're having trouble addressing, which is partly why they are doing the regional centralised manufacture. And there's another organisation out in the UK called Motivation that's doing uh, wheelchair manufacture in China essentially with the world made chair that's available through Shonequip. 
So there are other models of essentially centralized manufacture where you can get the economies of scale and then distributed, um, distributed service centers essentially is a way to do this. And I think that's, a, that's one of the things that the wheelchair industry or the wheelchair side of this has seen difficulty with is essentially just getting the economy of scale to make it affordable. Thanks a lot. I'm just wondering, I know there's uh, time limitation, but does somebody else have examples of other technologies outside of wheelchairs where this they have been able to manage this, these economies of scale with local manufacturing? So maybe we can discuss this actually during our breakout sessions or something. Okay, thanks so much. Uh, we're going to break out into three groups right now, and in your program, oh, I'm sorry. Um, in your program, and there's actually, I can bring some more in if you don't have a copy of it. Um, we have